Well, it's hard to believe we are almost to the end of the month of May. And for some folks, it has been rather wet and cool the last several days. What does that forecast look like this week? And as we get into the month of June and beyond, we're going to talk about all of that here today. Joining us now for our weekly weather update, Eric Snodgrass with Nutria to Ag Solutions. Eric, hope you had a great holiday weekend. Thanks for being with us. And uh, let's just start and let's try to summarize May so yeah. far. What have we seen here throughout this entire month of May? And I know specifically the last you know week or so, some areas have been very wet. We've seen cooler temperatures, things like that. So walk us through the month of May, Eric. So here it is in a nutshell, very active with respect to severe weather, right? So we are more than double our normal severe wind reports. Uh, we've had deep, deep cutoff lows that have had large synoptic scale wind fields, which has mean it's been a very windy May as well. We're way ahead of average on tornadoes already at 1,010 tornadoes on the year and hail's above normal too. Now, the end of May came in and it's still quite chilly. I mean, I'm, I'm wearing a jacket again today. Uh, but here's the most important thing. If, if you want to think about the rest of the season, okay, most important thing. From the Red River Valley of the South, so that's between Texas and Oklahoma, all the way through to the Ohio Valley, it's been wet. Now, why is that so important? In every summer where the Corn Belt, the whole of it, has had big time problems with drought, you've not been wet from Texas and Oklahoma to Ohio. And here's the reason why. You keep that whole region wet in spring. Later in summer when the Gulf tries to open and it has to go over that region to return rains to Missouri and Illinois and Iowa and Nebraska and every state that's around that, if that area is dry, it sucks all the moisture out of the atmosphere and drought gets worse. And we didn't do it. But here's what was weird about May, and this is where we missed. We had predicted the jet stream to go way far north, and it did. What was missed was cutoff lows in May started in the southwest and took four, five, six days to cross the country. And what, what, what I thought would happen was jet would go north, it would get hot, it would get dry, and it didn't happen. Those cutoff lows were kind of the, the mystery to forecasting this May and what made it so challenging. Now, what got us there, we did get right, which was the lower momentum state of the atmosphere. And here's what we need to think about. If the low momentum state comes back again, it's already been in here twice. If it comes back a third time in July and August, we do have flash drought, regional drought problems still to talk about. But where are they going to be? And are they going to be in the Western Corn Belt? Are they going to be, are they going to come back to the Mid South? I mean, you know, Jesse, you live in the Mid South. You know, and it's, and it's a possibility in the Mid South, and it's, we can't take it off the table. But May has been one that has been a frustrating month to forecast. And here we are at the end of it. And I just, I went to the Indy 500 over the weekend. And I got to be honest with you, uh, it was one of the coldest Indy 500s I've ever been to. And I don't know if you watched it, but they had problems getting heat in the tires. We had a guy that crashed on one of the parade laps because it wasn't enough heat in the tires. There was all sorts of things going on. Guys wrecking just coming into pit lane. And it was such a weird, weird race. And I was with a buddy of mine who... He goes, you know what? This reminds me of the race of 1992. Now, this dude's been going to races for a long time. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, it was really cold that in 1992 as well on Memorial Day. And sure enough, I looked up and it was it was cold. Now, I'm going to tell you something, though. 1992, even though it was cold on Memorial Day both times, is not a good analog for 2025. But it's just something to think about. This crop is not jumping out of the ground right now because of all the cold weather that's been around. We haven't had a frost problem right? But it's just been cool and it's going to be cool for the rest of this week. So there you go. What a weird May. Well, and as we go through the rest of this week and look ahead, we're going to kick off the month of June next week. And so what is the, the forecast telling you here as we get into the early part of June and even beyond? Are we going to see the pattern change, Eric? Well, yes. And, and this is what's going to be interesting. Uh, week one right now, most of the moisture is going into the south and southwest or excuse me, south and southeast. We're going to get overall in the Corn Belt drier conditions. Not dry. There's rain coming through right now. It's actually raining outside Champaign right now, but drier conditions. What I'm considering and, and really thinking hard about is do the models have it right? That week two brings off a big round of storms. That's that first week of June. And then we get into this quieter 
time period where things get hotter and hotter and hotter. And that's what the new CPC outlook's doing. It's for the plains, the, 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 um, the Western mountains, getting into the Northern plains and Western Corn Belt, getting hotter, but they don't have a precip signal for them yet. The European model's looking drier and warmer for the Western side of the central United States growing area, keeping the Eastern wet. That is one of the signals we have to pay attention to. But Jesse, I'll just tell you, the thing I will wake up every morning and look at is there's a chart we use and it's a chart that shows what's called global angular momentum. And it is a look at how the atmosphere is moving on top of the rotation of the earth. Both things move, right? When the atmosphere has more momentum than the earth's rotation, you tend to get lots and lots and lots of storm systems. When it doesn't, you get long waves that slow down and retrograde and somebody gets super wet and somebody gets super dry. And I just think that there is risk of that going into the end of the month of June and the start of July. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a whole lot of people that bought a whole lot of time with May rainfall. I mean, it even rained in Nebraska finally, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and as a result, we are going to be waiting. We've just kicked the can down the road on the major risk factor going forward. So yeah, I think June is going to be the critical month to watch for an early June pattern shift, big storm systems, early, early June. Uh, and then after that, do we calm the whole thing down and start to get some heat and drier weather? And now we move into pop-up thunderstorm season. That's the question. Well, I know something that can throw a wrench into any good weather pattern is a hurricane. And yeah. that's something else I think we need to start thinking about, Eric. I mean, talk about that. Hurricane season is right around the corner. Yeah, it starts in three days, right? We typically start uh, hurricane season on June 1. And we know, like, I just look back in history, like Hurricane Alberto came up the Mississippi, went into parts of Indiana and Illinois. It didn't have to rain at all for the next 40 days. We had enough moisture from that in the eastern Corn Belt. We've had other big barrel was another example. Hurricane that came up into eastern parts of Texas eventually got into these. I mean, so these hurricanes, these early season systems can be there. But here's the difference. Compared to a year ago right now, the ocean temperatures are much cooler in the middle of the Atlantic. They were just blazing hot last year. Most of the hurricane seasonal forecasts are still more active than normal, but not hyperactive. So the uh, Colorado State University outlook, for example, has just got three more named systems than average versus last year, which was like six or seven. And the newest National Hurricane Center forecast was just released. They're giving it a 60% chance of above normal. And uh, that's way down from where they were a year ago, which I believe they got up to either 75 or 80%. I have to go back and look that up. But last year was, you know, the prediction was for it to be big. But Jesse, it doesn't matter what we say about the hurricane season. It's if you get one in the Gulf that goes straight north. And if it does that, it brings rain to all of these states we're talking about having risk of there being drought, or at least some of them, not all of them. And you can't get a hurricane to North Dakota, but you can get hurricane moisture right over the top of your house, my house in the Eastern Corn Belt. So that's what we need to be thinking about going forward. It's another risk factor there. So yes, plenty to be watching as this season continues to go. But I'll say this, Jesse, we actually need heat on this crop. Mm -hmm. It is not jumping out of the ground. So a near-term hot forecast, which we will be getting hotter next week, okay? A near-term hot forecast and dry is not a bad thing. No, and that's a, a good point is that we need that heat. We need those heat units to get that crop to start popping out of the ground so we can try and have a good shot at a successful growing season. Eric, any thoughts, anything else from around the world that you're tracking as we close out the month? Yeah, I mean, folks are still going to ask a lot about El Nino and La Nina. No, we're not going into uh, We're going into Inso Neutral, okay? Uh, there is some concern. Some, last week, I did have released a new long-range forecast model that, again, tried to put Western Corn Belt and Black Sea drought in at the same time. The Indian monsoon will likely get an early start. I don't, there's been a whole lot of talk about problems in China and I can't, I can't, I can't find them. Like if I were seeing problems in China, I'd see some issue on like NDVI data or I, I don't know. I don't think there's as big a problem in some key growing areas as otherwise discussed. Um, but you know, I think around the world, I think the world is actually watching the United States in terms of grain production. And I, I, I think we should too. Well, I know folks can stay up to date with the latest weather on your website at agweather.com, ag-wx.com. And I believe I saw this over the weekend. You're rolling out uh, the newsletter once again, yes. right, Eric? Yeah, so uh, we're going to restart it. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, to get this. It's, I hope it's much more useful. We're going to be able to release some new tools on that as well. 
Um, and I tell you what, Jesse, next week when we jump on, I will give you the sign up so that you can blast it out there and show it to everybody. And we'll let anybody sign up for it. It's it's great, but it'll come out once a week. And just, just like we're doing, it's a supplement to that. Here's big picture things. I'm going to do mostly graphics, not narratives. And we'll be able to kind of show folks where we think there could be, you know, good, bad, and ugly. That's the point. We'll look forward to that next week. Until then, folks can go to agweather.com, ag-wx.com for more. Eric Stodgrass, good to talk with you. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Jesse.